Hey everyone, Ryan here with Romeo Music, and you're watching Live Audio 101. Last week we covered the basics of how your mixer is laid out and how it all functions. Now that all of your sources are mixed to your liking, we need to send that signal to your speakers. A speaker driver effectively works like a dynamic microphone, but in reverse. Instead of capturing vibrations to turn it into an electronic signal, you take the electronic signal and turn it into vibrations. This works by connecting a magnet to a driver cone and sending an electrical signal through the copper coil wrapped around the magnet. With enough electromagnetic force, the driver will vibrate enough to project sound. When it comes to loudspeakers that are intended for live music, it's very rare that a single driver is intended to cover the entire range of frequencies in your signal. The most common variation of loudspeaker design is a two-way speaker, like the E-Series from QSC. These speakers will use a crossover to split the high and low frequencies and send them to drivers that are specifically designed to handle those frequencies accordingly. A three-way speaker, like the DRM315P from Mackie, uses the same concept but splits the signal into drivers dedicated to low, mid, and high frequencies. For for many applications, it's also advisable to have a dedicated subwoofer, like this CW118V from Yamaha, to handle projection of frequencies below 100 Hz. Now, the outputs from your mixer just don't have enough current to be able to truly drive your speaker. So that's where the amplifier comes in. In short, an amplifier is going to take the signal from your mixer and dramatically increase the amperage of it. Most amplifiers have the same basic function. So let's start by taking a look at a more basic option like the GX series from QSC. On one side, you'll see the inputs. For now, we'll assume we're plugging the main outputs from the mixer into these two channels. On the other side, you have your outputs in a variety of different connector styles. On the front of the amplifier will be gain attenuation knobs, which control how much of your signal you let into the amplifier from the mixer. We'll talk about some ways you might go about setting these levels when we talk about sound check. Some of these entry-level amplifiers will have switch gear for frequency crossover, EQ, delay, polarity, or amplifier bridging. Newer amplifiers, like the DNA series from Danley, will instead have a digital signal processor which allows for much more pinpointed control of these parameters. We'll talk more about their purpose and uses when we get to our Live Audio 102 series. With advancements in amplifier technology, it's become much more common to combine an amplifier with another piece of equipment in your sound system. Over half the loudspeakers speakers on the market today are like these DXR speakers from Yamaha, in that they are powered or active speakers. This means that they have amplifiers built into them. Depending on your application, this could be a more convenient option for you, as they require less physical equipment to move from gig to gig, and the amplifiers are already calibrated to the specifications of the speaker. However, these speakers require both a signal from the mixer and a dedicated power cable to run to them. Additionally, all of the amplifier control is on the back of the speaker, which gives the sound engineer less control from behind the mixing console and can pose an issue if a nosy audience member decides to touch something. Powered mixers, like the EMX series from Yamaha, have amplifiers incorporated into the mixer. In situations where only one or two amplified channels are needed, powered mixers offer you a slim and convenient option that requires very little cable and minimal setup and teardown. Some products, referred to as portable PAs, will offer a full front-to-back solution, with the mixer, amplifier, and speaker built into one unit. The sound machine from Sound Projections even includes wireless microphones and a rechargeable battery, lending itself to true wireless operation. While they're generally not suited for use as a complete live performance sound system, these are generally used where convenience and portability are paramount. Hopefully you've come away from this with an understanding of the basic components of your system and how they function with each other. Next week, we're going to talk about connecting everything in our system and how to set it up for your next function. If you have any other questions about speakers, amplifiers, or anything else music technology, feel free to contact us at 1-800-466-1773 or email us at info at romeomusic.net. Be sure to click subscribe and follow so that you can stay current on everything music technology. And thank you for visiting Romeo Music, your source for educational music and performing arts technology.